This video will explore ghosts, fallen angels, and jinn, unveiling the mysteries. From campfire stories to spooky movies, the idea of ghosts and supernatural beings has always fascinated us. Many cultures have tales of spirits and creatures that exist beyond our perception. In Islam, we learn about a realm unseen, inhabited by creation like jinn. These beings mentioned in the Quran and Hadith are distinct from humans and angels, possessing their own free will and purpose. This essay will explore the concepts of ghosts and jinn, comparing their characteristics and examining whether the dead can return to haunt the living. We will delve into Islamic teachings to understand these phenomena, relying on the Quran, hadith and insights from renowned Islamic scholars. The terms ghost and jinn are often used interchangeably, but they represent distinct entities in Islamic belief. Ghosts, as commonly understood, are the spirits of deceased humans lingering on earth. Islam, however, posits a clear separation between the physical death of the body and the soul's journey to the afterlife. According to Dr. Bilal Phillips in his book, The Fundamentals of Tawhid, 1990, the concept of jinn is deeply rooted in Islamic theology. The Quran in Surah Al-Hijr, 1527, mentions the creation of jinn from smokeless fire. Additionally, Sheikh Yasir Qadi in his lecture series, The World of the Jinn, 2012, explains the distinctions between jinn and ghosts. Created from smokeless fire, they are mentioned in the Quran alongside humans as beings capable of understanding free will and accountability to Allah. While invisible to the human eye, jinn exist in our world and can influence events in ways we may not always comprehend. The question of whether the dead can become ghosts and haunt the living is a topic of much debate and speculation. In Islamic theology, death is a definitive end to our time in this world. Once a person dies, their soul departs and enters the barzakh, an intermediate state between death and resurrection. The Quran explicitly states in Surah Al Mu'minun 23 99 100 that the dead cannot return to the world of the living until the day of judgment. Hadith such as those compiled by Imam Bukhari in Sahih Bukhari, 9th century, further emphasize that the souls of the departed do not roam among the living. Instead, they are in a realm where they await their ultimate fate, as discussed by scholars like Ibn Qayyim al jawziya in Kitab al-Ruh, 14th century. Section 4. Jinn in Disguise, Unveiling the Truth While Islam firmly rejects the notion of ghosts as we typically understand them, it acknowledges that jinn can interact with our world and even assume different forms. Some scholars suggest that what people perceive as ghostly apparitions might actually be jinn disguising themselves. These jinn may mimic the appearance or behavior of deceased individuals, leading to the belief that the dead have returned. However, this is a deception as jinn possess the ability to shape shift and manipulate perceptions. The Quran warns us against being deceived by Satan and his allies, including those among the jinn who choose to disobey Allah. Section 5. Conclusion, Seeking Knowledge and Protection. Understanding the distinction between ghosts and jinn is crucial for Muslims. While the concept of ghosts is not supported by Islamic teachings, the existence of jinn is a reality. 
we must rely on authentic sources like the Quran and Hadith along with the guidance of knowledgeable scholars to navigate these matters. By seeking knowledge and protection from Allah, we can differentiate between truth and falsehood, avoiding fear and superstition. Remember, Allah is the ultimate protector and seeking refuge in Him is our greatest defense against any harm seen or unseen. Section 6. Distinguishing Ghosts, Fallen Angels, Angels and Jinn In Islamic theology, understanding the distinctions between ghosts, fallen angels, angels and jinn is essential. Firstly, angels are pure obedient beings created from light. They do not possess free will and are incapable of disobedience. Their main role is to carry out Allah's commands, as highlighted in the Quran, Surah Al-Tahrim, Ayah 6. They do not disobey Allah in what He commands them, but do what they are commanded. However, the concept of fallen angels, as found in some other religious traditions, does not align with Islamic teachings. In Islam, angels cannot fall from grace as they are inherently sinless and obedient. On the other hand, jinn are created from smokeless fire, as mentioned in Surah Al-Hijr, Ayah 27, and the jinn we create before from scorching fire. Unlike angels, jinn possess free will, which means they can choose to obey or disobey Allah. This is evidenced by the story of Iblis, a jinn who disobeyed Allah and was cast out of heaven, as described in Surah Al-Kaf, Ayah 15 and mention when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, and they prostrated, except for Iblis. He was of the jinn and departed from the command of his Lord. Muslim scholars have elaborated on these distinctions, emphasizing that while angels are always obedient, jinn have the capacity for both good and evil. This understanding is crucial for Muslims to navigate the complexities of the unseen world. By distinguishing between angels, fallen angels, and jinn using authentic sources like the Quran and Hadith, we gain clarity and avoid misconceptions. Do not forget to tap on the like, subscribe, and share buttons, and also leave a comment. This knowledge empowers us to seek protection and guidance from Allah, the ultimate source of truth and security. Remember, seeking knowledge and understanding through the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the key to distinguishing truth from falsehood. And in doing so, we strengthen our faith and trust in Allah's protection. Do not forget to tap on the like, subscribe and share buttons and also leave a comment.